A vast ye scallywag. Here's your look at the new Diamond Select, the Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man Tell No Tales, the Jack Sparrow collectible action figure. Johnny Depp returns to the big screen as the iconic swashbuckling anti-hero Jack Sparrow in the all-new Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man Tell No Tales. The rip-roaring adventure finds down on his luck Captain Jack feeling the winds of ill fortune blowing strongly his way. When deadly ghost sailors led by the terrifying Captain Salazar escape from the Devil's Triangle bent on killing every pirate at sea, notably Jack. This 7-inch action figure features approximately 16 points of articulation and character appropriate accessories. Arr. Before we get a closer look at Captain Jack Sparrow, don't worry, I'm not going to do that again. The first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall exactly the figure stands. I'd like to thank the folks over at Diamond Select that provide the sample of Jack Sparrow that we could have a look at in this review. Jack should be available right now in retail stores and online as well. Going to go ahead and take the tape measure right to the very top of his head. And we're going to stop it right there. According to the readouts, Mr. Jack Sparrow stands 6.7 inches in height. Switching that quickly over to centimeters, the figure stands 17 centimeters exactly. And though you wouldn't find them necessarily in the same movie verse, at least I don't think you would, let's bring in one of the other figures that Diamond Select have put out. This is the recently looked at Crow, Eric Draven. Big fan of this figure, actually. I really liked how this one turned out. Jack Sparrow, though, as you can see, is quite a bit, quite a bit shorter than Eric Draven when you compare the two figures side to side. R and Jack be coming with many accessories as well. Okay, seriously, we're going to stop that. He comes in clue with a display stand, a regular oval stand that's all molded here in plastic with one singular peg. You probably can see it's a magnet to fingerprints. I thought I wiped this already. Boy, if I'm going to be leaving evidence at the crime scene, I've already said too much. But I do appreciate, again, the fact that they would take the time to include display stands. Think of the number of companies that are still including stands with their characters. Again, I appreciate it. Always like it. Even though it doesn't have a whole lot going on for it, just being a simple oval black display stand is what it's signed up to do, and that's what it's succeeding in being. We're going to move that to the side. And then you get this. This is rather interesting. I believe this is part of a ship, but it's actually made up of different components. So you can really configure it to the way that you want. See what I mean? I'm going to move this over for a second. Move Jack over for a second. First of all, you get the front railing, which as you can see is curved. It is made of brown plastic. I know I'm stating the obvious, but what I may not also be stating the obvious, it does have some nice sculpted floorboarding there as well. It does have these little notches here on the front and the reasoning why those are there. And also too, you can detach this if you want to as well. This, this comes completely loose. Like I said, there's going to be a lot of stuff you can do with this display stand. And even though I really don't even want, want to call it a display stand either, it's more like a diorama. So what you get is you get basically this, this part right here, which is, I'm guessing again, to be the boat deck. It does have some hinges, and the reasoning why that's the case is because you can either go from this width, which basically would then involve you taking these little clips that are on the either side of the front. And if you flip this around, on the bottom, there's these there's a little opening slot there and a, a peg area there, and just all you have to really do and actually what I would suggest you doing first is taking this off, going back to it, keeping it together, keeping it together, and then peg these in first. So that holds everything together. And then you go ahead and take the railing and the railing attaches just like so. The whole idea is it's supposed to overlap to the front. And you got this nice little finished piece that you can then take Jack Sparrow and you can display him behind it. I know what you're thinking. What if I don't have that much space? Ah. Diamond thought of that because what you could also do too is take the railing off, take this front section off, and then take off one of these parts, just attaches like this. Then take the end piece that detaches, and then you can reduce the footprint in which this attaches. See, like that. And that certainly gives you a lot, lot more space to work with. When it comes to displaying the figure. Now, the only downside, though, to having it reduced in size like this 
is on the very front, there is still just one notch. But unfortunately here, if you wanna put this piece in front, those aren't gonna fit in place. It's only gonna fit on the one side. So it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be off. It's gonna be off to the side like this. That probably doesn't look too good. Or what you can also do too, at the very beginning of this review, I ended up doing this, attach them in the middle like this and just sort of rest it into the front. It gives you like a little, like I said, a smaller space to have Jack Sparrow on display. But it doesn't just stop there. No, no, no. It sounds like an infomercial, I know. We can take this, remove this. You can take this piece off. You can take this piece off. And you can actually connect the two together. Now, that's absolutely ridiculous. Jack's not going to be able to do much of anything other than just balancing on top of it. But at least you can reduce it. And it gives you pieces that all basically are fit and designed to fit in with one another. Like that. So again, you can either go from the large, medium, or the baby bear, super, super small. I wanna quickly show you guys the detailing on the railings on the sides, just as nicely sculpted as the front of the railing that we looked at before. So again, I like that. I think ultimately when it comes to displaying this guy, I'm probably gonna just take the one piece and attach these on either side, attach this on either side, forego this part completely, because I just think that that's, it's just gonna make it way too big. And I'm just gonna bring this, bring it around to the front, display it like that. So again, yeah, you can reduce and configure it to exactly the way that you want. With that being said, let's go ahead and move that out of the way. And of course, look at our focus, our attention, the topic of this review, Jack Sparrow himself. Other than the things that I just listed, he unfortunately doesn't come with any other accessories, which is kind of really strange because if you look at the figure, I'm going to go ahead and pick him up here. I'm going to move his arm out of the way. He has a holster located on the side of his torso, which looks like it's clearly designated for something like a musket. Unfortunately, though, he doesn't come included with one. And even if he did, he doesn't have actually the proper hands to hold said musket because the hands that he's currently spins, he's currently sporting are flat hands. They're just regular relaxed hands. I had heard that there are Walgreen exclusives of the Eric Draven Crow that we just looked at not too long ago. I'm definitely going to see if I can find and pick up one of those, or at least I think there's a couple of variations of those. I'm going to see if I can pick them up. I'm wondering if the same thing applies for Jack Sparrow. If there is going to be an exclusive release of the very same character, same figure, where it's going to have the musket that comes included that fits inside of this, and he may come with swappable hands. If you have seen that figure circulating around in your, in your area, let me know down below in the comments section, or if you've picked that figure up for yourself. But I'm curious as to why... Yeah, that holster located on the side doesn't have a corresponding musket that can fit inside of that. With that being said, let's get a closer look at the figure itself. And you know what? I'm I'm really liking these figures. I had a big thing for the Eric Draven Crow. I thought that was a decent looking figure. It had a slight cartoonish look to it. And I almost maybe perhaps would say the same thing for Jack Sparrow. But I did I dig the figure. I do like the look of it. Uh, my only my only real honest critique of the figure itself is not necessarily from a sculpt standpoint. If anything, I would say that the skin tone is a little too light. Jack Sparrow would have a much darker skin complexion. And I don't think that this figure, I don't think drives that home too well. I think you're ultimately looking at a figure that's a little too light, a little too fair skinned. I probably, again, would have made that skin just a little bit darker. But outside of that... I really like how this one turned out. Now, if you are curious, the hat isn't removable. It's all molded to the rest of his face. So if you try yanking that off, it's just going to ultimately break and you're going to be very, very disappointed. Paint on this guy is really good. It's even got the little markings on the face there. You can see on his face there. Very nicely done. The sculpting also and the little braided beards look good as well. And even like the hair has a lot of stuff going for it. Not only does it have the dreads with the little braided uh, tie-offs, but you can see, like, if you're looking at it, it's sort of just, there's a lot of stuff that you can find in his hair. Like, for example, the little skull located on the back. So I really think that Diamond Select did such a great job on the hair and the head of Jack Sparrow. Could admittingly, yes, the head sculpt be slightly darker? Sure, yes, I will say that. But I'm really happy, though, with the head sculpt. I think it turned out pretty good indeed. He does have the longer pirate jacket. You really can't remove it, even though it really does give you the idea that you can. What ultimately is going to be left behind is still the sleeves. I guess they probably could have given you a swappable hands, but that would involve you then having to yank the arms out. I would prefer instead just to display Jack Sparrow with the jacket. I think it looks really good. 
He does have the compass. He does have all the little rags and additional belts that he has in the movie are all very well presented here on the figure itself. Now, this is all dense plastic. These are all molded together, so the belts aren't removable or movable, at least. All of this is sculpted in place, even the little compass sculpted in there. But again, the fact that they did so much to this figure is really a rewarding experience when you see this in hand. The pattern work that they've done to the actual shirt and uh, underneath the jacket, nicely done there as well. And colorings is really quite good on this figure. If anything, I would just again say that the, the skin tone is just a little too light for my liking. We get a little bit further down on the figure. You got the buccaneer style boots with the nice flaps done on the top, a nice dark color. He doesn't have a lot in the way of additional washing. I guess the only place that he does get a lot of that is the jacket itself, which seems to start in a relatively dark blue area, and then they've brushed on top of it a lighter color just to give it a little bit of age and wear and tear. The little snap, little fastened snaps along the bottom area there as well. Just again, a nicely detailed jacket, a nicely detailed figure, and a really nice looking Jack Sparrow all around. Shall we now look at the articulation on Jack Sparrow? Thank you. Thank you for that. Head rotates back and forth. It is limited. I'm sure you could probably imagine that just simply because he's got such long hair, not only in the front, but also in the back does limit what you can then do when it comes to Jack's head. It does rotate back and forth, but you're going to have some resistance while you're doing it. As for the arms, the arms hinge out fully and comfortably at a 90 degree angle bend. You can bring the arms all the way around as well though they do squeak and creak when you do that, he does have a single hinge on the elbow, but it's a very wide hinge. See how much there is to work with. The forearm also rotates back and forth, and his hands, though we didn't really spend a lot of time looking at it with all the nice rings and the painted in nails, those rotate back and forth. This one rotates also back and forth. I like that this one, by the way, this hand right here doesn't have the little cuff of the sleeve sticking out, whereas this one does. It just kind of adds a little bit of extra character to the actual figure itself. Then for the upper torso. Now, his upper torso is on a ball joint, but while you are moving everything, while you are moving his torso, like the jacket and everything is going to go along with the, with the ride. So you can move that back and forth, up and down, and rock it back and forth this way. Then for the legs, the legs split out. They have put a split on either side of the, I don't know if it's a tunic, I guess it would be a long sleeve shirt. Uh, there's a split on there so you can bring the legs out. You can bring the legs forward and back slightly just because that's a little bit more limited. He has a double hinge on the knee. He has articulation as well at the top swivel of the thigh. Hinging back and forth on the feet. And yes, you can rock them back and forth as well this way. Short of maybe just changing and darkening the color of his skin tone. I'm really happy with how this one turned out. It's a bit strange though. Again, like he's got that slot located on the side. The little holster looks like it should belong to something. And yet this particular figure doesn't come in clue with a musket. Now, I don't know if perhaps their original plan was to release this guy with a musket and they just didn't want to include a firearm or if there is going to be a circumstance like the Eric Draven where the same figure is going to be released. Let's just move him a little more dead center. Where the same figure is going to be released somewhere else and you're going to be benefited with some additional accessories that didn't include with this figure. One little bit I wanted to tack on to the end of this video in case anybody had picked up Jack Sparrow for themselves, alarmed by the fact that this humbled reviewer never mentioned the fact that he came with anything else I did find later on, after the very end of this video, I found myself a hand that included a sword. Now, of course, looking at the hands and realizing now after the fact that Jack Sparrow did in fact come included with another accessory, we can certainly go ahead and rectify things by going ahead and removing his hand, replacing it now with the new found hand. It's almost like I found buried treasure. Well, actually it was just, it somehow fell out of the packaging and somehow onto the floor. I just never even noticed it was there. But Jack Sparrow does in fact come included with both a swap swappable hand and he also comes included with a sword. So in case, yes, anybody had picked up Jack Sparrow and said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How did he not have a sword inside the packaging? Ah, uh, I did have the sword and another hand in the packaging. Like I said, it must have just fallen out. Captain Jack, Johnny Depp, you know, now every single time I think of Jack Sparrow, I can't help but think of that song by Lonely Island featuring Michael Bolton singing about Jack Sparrow. If you haven't yet watched the song or listened to the song, watch the music video. 
You can go ahead and watch it after this review and you can thank me later. It's going to get stuck in your head. You know, Jack Sparrow doesn't have as many of the accessories as perhaps Eric Draven that we looked at before. Now, where he does make up for it in plastic is, of course, the diorama piece that comes included with the figure. And I appreciate the fact that Diamond Slut gave you compatible options that if you wanted to reduce the footprint, if you don't want it as big, you can break down the pieces and you can have it in a smaller footprint space like this, like what I'm doing here in Final Looks and like what I'm probably going to do when I have this guy on display on my shelf. That other piece of floorboarding, I'm just going to probably just keep in a bag somewhere. You never know when I might actually need to use that for something else. But I do appreciate the fact that Diamond Select gave you the options available that you can go from Papa Bear, Mama Bear, all the way down to small Baby Bear. Baby Bear is way too small for Captain Jack Sparrow to actually stand inside of. He does come also include with a display stand, although truth be told, he stands fine on his own. I don't really think I need a display stand. The figure's got some nice detailing to it. Has a lot of good coloring going for him, despite the fact that I feel his skin pigmentation is still a little too light. Now, if you compare it, though, to the back of the packaging, he is a little bit more flustered and a little bit more rouge in the cheeks on the back of the packaging. I'm glad that the figure doesn't actually look like that. But yeah, darker skin probably could have just enhanced the look of Jack Sparrow. But all the rest of the figure looks really great. He is missing, of course, a musket or something that's going to be housed inside his holster. So yeah, I am going to be a bit on a pirate hunt for myself to see if there is another version of Jack Sparrow that's going to come include with different things, similar to what they did with the Walgreens exclusive of Eric Draven, which I'm currently trying to track down and see if I can pick him up for my collection. What do you guys think of Jack Sparrow? Let me know down below in the comments section. And for your video question for today, what's your favorite Pirates of the Caribbean movie? For me, it's the second one. It's the, I, I, what was the second one? The second one was with Davy Jones. I'm trying to think, is it Dead Men Tell No Tales? It was Dead Men Tell No Tales, wasn't it? That's my favorite Pirates of the Caribbean movie. What's yours? Let me know down below in the comments section. Also, I'd like to thank the folks over at Diamond Select that provided the sample of Jack Sparrow that we could have a look at in this review. Captain Jack, Johnny Depp. It's going to be stuck in your head. I'm, sh I'm telling you right now, you go watch the music video. It's going to be stuck in your head. You're going to be walking around outside or maybe at work and you're going to be singing Captain Jack, Johnny Depp. And then you're going to say, oh, review spot. He did it again. He did it again. Lots of stuff coming your way, guys. So make sure you're keeping peepers peeled to this channel at all times. And thanks for watching. See you guys next time.